There we go. Oh, we have one more one person more coming in right now. Yep. We'll wait till she gets on and then I'll start. All right. Don't see audio. I was gonna wait till Ashley got audio, which doesn't look like she's. Ashley, can you hear us already? Send her a message. Um, well, maybe Kath or Joe, would you be able to work with Ashley? Um, sure. To see if she. You can get her audio. Sure. She just, yeah, she just told me she can't hear us. Okay. Huh. All right. Yep. Um, well, we can get started, and there might be a couple of other people that join us. But uh, anyways, welcome to the info session for Coral Reef Ecology in Belize. Um, we can start out by introducing ourselves, and then I'll share a presentation that we'll walk through. And you guys are welcome. If you have questions as I'm going through it, you can interrupt me at any point. Otherwise, um, there'll be space for questions at the end. But excited that you guys are here. Um, so I guess I can start by introducing myself. I'm Teal Getcho. I am one of the co-instructors for this course and I have previously TA'd it for the past um, three years. So this will be my fourth year. Um, I did my undergrad and master's work at UW-Madison. Um, when I was an undergrad, I did this, uh, the FIG, so if you're a FIG student, um, I did the FIG course with Kath. At that time, we had gone to Ecuador, uh, and then I did the se semester-long course, which Kath and Joe are on now in Ecuador. Um, I then started working for a little while, and I have now gone back to school for my PhD at Arizona State University um, doing marine conservation work. Um, so excited for you guys to be here. And I should add, I have previously interned with Wildlife Conservation Society doing a bunch of work out at another marine reserve, but also the marine reserve where this course will take place. Um, so yeah, always excited to go back there. Um, I guess I'll give it to, to Joe and then Kat. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Meisel. Uh, I work for the SABA Foundation and based in Madison, but as Teal said, I'm currently in Ecuador leading a semester abroad program. Part of that program includes a marine component. We go to the Galapagos Islands and do marine research projects and uh, have a really nice time. Um, I was originally a terrestrial ecologist, so I still am in some ways. Uh, mostly what I do is conservation work. I have my PhD at the University of Wisconsin where I specialize on some rainforest species of birds and ants. But ever since then, I've done stuff like worked on plants a lot and wrote a book about orchids. And then for the last bunch of years, been really interested in marine biology. I've taught this course in some different ways with Teal or Kath or both of them uh, two or three times in the last four or five years, kind of including the pandemic. And I just finished writing a book on a fish. So coming soon to a bookstore near you. All right, hi everybody. Um... Hi, Jill. I just saw your video come on live. I'd love to see all your faces when you um, guys decide to enter it when you get around to introducing yourself. Um, we'll all presumably be pretty uh, sharing close quarters in Belize together. So it'd be great to see all y'all uh, this time. My name is Catherine Woodward. I am a teaching faculty at University of Wisconsin Madison, where I teach a fall fig course, rainforest and coral reefs. And a couple of my fig students from last fall are here and hopefully coming with us in Belize. To Belize this summer. Um, I also teach conservation biology and right now I'm in Ecuador with Joe and we're teaching a tropical conservation semester program. Um, I've led the Belize trip for multiple years in a row as well and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to meeting all y'all and uh, talking about this upcoming trip this summer. Cool thanks Kat. I'm just going to go down or across the list of names that I see on here so why don't we start with Naomi and Jenna, and it would be really great to hear um, what school you're part of, because I know we'll probably have a mixture of UW-Madison as well as some other schools. So where you currently go to school, what year you are in, and uh, what is your major? I think that would be nice. So Naomi. 
Um, um, I'm Naomi. I go to Wash U in St. Louis, um, and I'm a sophomore there. Um, and I'm majoring in um, environmental analysis, is what it's called, and um, women, gender, sexuality studies. Very cool mix. Um, Jenna? Hi, um, my name is Jenna. I go to UW Madison, and right now my major is environmental science and communication arts, but I'm not sure if I want to like stick to that or like animal science or zoology or conservation bio. So I'm still like figuring that out and I'm a freshman. Great. Um, how about Katie and then Joe? Hi, I'm Katie. I'm a freshman at UW Madison and my major is biology. And then I was gonna minor in Spanish, but we can't like do that right now. So I might major in it um, or just like take a lot of like have a lot of emphasis in Spanish. Um, I'm Jill. I'm a junior at UW Madison and I'm studying conservation biology and environmental studies. Oh, and then Jocelyn, or Jocelyn, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, my name's Jocelyn. Sorry, I'm on my phone right now and the video is not good, so I just didn't want to do that. But um, I'm a junior at ASU and my major is environmental sciences with an emphasis on conservation, biology and ecology. And I'm uh, part of me wants to possibly go over to animal behavior because I'm starting to find out I have a real, real fascination with that stuff. Very cool. Well, you can definitely take advantage of the Belize trip to to do a little bit on perhaps fish behavior or something along those lines, if you want to look at. Um, really great to meet all of you. I think I'm going to share we lost my Ashley. Screen. I think we lost Ashley. Yeah, it looks Ashley. like we, yeah, I wonder if she's having some connection issues. So hopefully she, she might. She was able to hear us, she said in the chat, but. Okay, um, good. Oh, wait. I, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Well, hopefully she'll come yeah, back. Hopefully. Hopefully she comes back. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. I think I just have to show you guys yourselves. And then, mm -hmm. All right, can you see that okay? Yeah, cool. All right, so I'm gonna walk through um, parts of this and then I'll hand it over to Joe and he'll also talk us through some of it. And as I said, feel free to interrupt me at any point um that's totally fine can you see me moving you guys around the video okay I'm just moving it around on my screen because I can't get it to hide um so today we're going to go over um the coral reef ecology course in Belize um there will be if you aren't a fig student this may be a little bit confusing but just bear with us for those that were fig students um you are considered you know um I think it's track one of this course in which you will just be joining us for the mostly for the July 17th to 30th uh, in person portion of the course. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And if you are um, joining the entire course, you're considered one of the online students in track two in which you'll do some online coursework and then join us in in Belize. And that will run then from June 26th to um or I'm sorry, July 30th, but the online portion for you will be June 26th to July 14th. Um, can't hear you, Kath. Thank you. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but if anyone has a question at any time, you could just put it in the chat and I'll make sure I'm monitoring those um, and uh, cool. make sure your questions get answered. Perfect. And if somebody doesn't know what FIG students are, they're first year <laughs> groups at UW-Madison. Um, anyone who's taking the two credit track has already taken a coral reef ecology class in the fall last year, which is why they skipped the online portion because they've already had all that content in the fall, just coming for the research portion for the two weeks. So just to clear that up, if people don't know what FIG students <laughs> are. Which I don't yeah, no, thanks, Kath. Um, so as you may guess, this is a photo of one of the year's groups out at um, Glover's with one of our boat captains, Buck, although he's not out there anymore, but just a little intro slide for you guys. Um, all right, so Glover's Reef Research Station. This is where we will be headed and housed for most of the trip when we're out there. I'm gonna start by showing you this map of Belize. So it's a pretty small country nestled between Mexico and Guatemala. Um, and where you fly into is right around here, if you can see my cursor, which is Belize City. 
Um, but where we'll be, where we'll be going and spending most of our time is out here at Glover's Reef um, Atoll, which if you don't know what an atoll is yet, um, you will be learning that during your online portion of the course, but it's a really unique uh, place. Uh, and that's where we'll be spending most of our time. And it's about from Belize City, it's about 40 miles offshore, um, which we will take a boat from. And so when we're out there, Glover's Reef has um, four different keys or, or islands on them. They call them keys. The one that you see here is Middle Key, which is the island that we stay at. So you can see kind of over here on the left, this is the research station. It's owned by Wildlife Conservation Society, um, you know, a global conservation organization that you guys have probably heard of. Um, so they own this research research station and work out of here, um, as well as the Belize Fisheries Department is housed here, uh, and so is the Coast Guard. So they do work out here. Um, what you can see here in this photo is where these waves are breaking. This is the reef crest. And again, these are, if you don't know what these concepts are yet, these are all things that you'll learn during your online portion. But essentially you see the reef crest here and right behind that back here is, is really the open ocean. And right in front of you, in front of this island is, is the lagoon. Um, you can see all this dark spot is the seagrass bed. So it's a really, really fun um, and quite amazing place to be. Um, so again, it's it's located over here where this red star is. And, and I will say that if you follow my cursor here on the screen, what you see are these kind of dots of blue lines. That's the Belize Barrier Reef, um, part of the Mesoamerican Reef, which is the second largest barrier reef in the world. So right after the um, Great Barrier Reef and is the largest barrier reef in our hemisphere. So really cool, really cool place. Um, so while we're out there, so Glover's Reef has a wide array of different systems in it, and one of them being patch reefs. So inside that lagoon, you'll find over 800 different patch reefs. And so these are areas of uh, really patches of, of coral reef. And this is an image here up close to kind of show you what one of those might look like. You'll also see a mix of seagrass beds and uh, a little bit of, of mangroves out there. Um, and you'll have access to all of this really just like right off, you know, your front doorstep of the, the dorm that you'd be staying in. It's really cool. Um, as I said, there are mangroves out there. So this is one of the student groups um, from one of the years that was looking at, I can't remember exactly, organisms that inhabit the, the roots of the red mangrove tree. Um, so they were out here snorkeling and looking around. Um, and they have all three types, four-ish types of mangroves out there, which you guys will learn about. Again, the red, the black, the white, and then the buttonwood. Um, also access to extensive seagrass beds. So right off of the, the dock, if I go back to this first photo, just to show you guys, as I said, all this dark stuff here, this is all seagrass beds, another really unique um, system. Again, seagrass beds are, seagrasses are true plants, true flowering plants, um, and something that you'll have access to, to think about in terms of developing your research study and what you guys might be interested in looking at. Um, so, and you can see here in the photo, one of these students was laying a transect line over the seagrass bed. Perhaps if I remember correctly, they were looking for queen conch along this transect line. Um, and looking at a study between size differences and maturity of queen conch in the seagrass beds. Um, so other than being a really cool place, um, what can you expect to do um, or for this course to be like while we're out there? Um, again, the image that you see here is, is looking out on um, from one of the student dorms from Glover's Reef. So you will arrive in Belize again for the FIG students, you've already taken your um, marine ecology or tropical ecology course. So you have that foundational knowledge. For those that then will do the online portion, you will do it there. And you will work you know, with your group, with a group to develop a research plan, a research idea. What question do you have? 
and develop your methods around that and how you think you might go about doing that while you're out at Glovers. So you will be set up really well during that, that three week online portion for when you arrive in Belize. Um, once we're out at Glover's Reef Research Station, you will be staying in cabins, um, in bunk beds shared. So it ranges anywhere from four to six students, I believe, per cabin uh, with shared bathrooms. Um, you will get all meals all day. You will not go hungry. You get enough food there. It's delicious Belizean food from a cook from Belize. It's wonderful. Um, the staff out there, it's a really great opportunity as well to engage with the culture and learn a bit more about the culture. It's a really unique place of, you have Mayan and Spanish and Garifuna and Creole people, and you can get a mix of all those folks out at, at Glover. So it's a really great opportunity for you guys to learn, you know, beyond the ecology work, what, um, what their culture and what Belize is like. Um, when we first get out there, we will do an introductory snorkel. So we'll just practice snorkeling, identifying, starting to get a hang of identifying fishes and other creatures, uh, as well as practicing your methods. So, um, you know, you'll come up with your methods, what you think you might be able to do while you're, you know, sitting at a desk in Wisconsin or sitting at a desk in Arizona. Um, but once you get out there, you know, it might not be exactly what you've planned. Um, and that's really, really typical of just how research goes. And so you'll have the opportunity to practice your methods and see if it works. Maybe they will go great. And sometimes it will be difficult and you're going to have to make some adjustments. So we'll do um, an early snor snorkel to, to practice those methods and see how they're going and then work with you guys if you need to make any um, adaptations to what you're looking to do. Um, and again, as I said, there's Pat Treefs and seagrass beds just offshore. I think I have, there's a photo later to show you, um, where you can see patch reefs from the actual island that we're at, just so you can see just how close they are. We also have boat access for your projects. So Glover's Reef is, is huge. It's about seven miles across and about 20 miles long. Um, and the, the area that all of the islands are in is considered the conservation zone where there is no fishing allowed. Um, and then outside of that area, there is fishing allowed. So you can consider that when you're developing your research question and your methods is whether or not you want to sample from um, a non-fishing and a fishing zone. Um, and we will have access to both of those zones uh, by boat, as well as different locations within you know, the conservation zone. So you're not just sampling from those same patch reefs right offshore that you can swim to. We can take a boat further um, along. So we'll have access. You'll get to see um, quite a different number of patch reefs within Glover's Reef. We'll also, as I showed you, um, I don't know if I can go backwards. Here on this photo, we'll also hopefully, assuming weather and everything cooperates with us, um, we'll be able to take a snorkel out here on the floor reef, which is another really kind of unique zone of coral reef systems, um, but it's definitely much cheap, uh, deeper, which is why we don't, and choppier, which is why we don't conduct our your research there. Um, oh. So, and again, so we'll spend most of the time out at Glover's Reef, but then we'll come to the mainland at the end for about two and a half days um, to do a couple of excursions. We'll go to the rainforest, uh, we'll do cave tubing, maybe we'll go to some mangroves and we'll uh, go see an archeological site. So a nice time to kind of come back and kind of wind down a little bit from um, all the hard work that you guys were doing spending uh, all your time uh, in the water. I think I've stole it from Joe, but you guys are in the water 27 hours a day. Um, it's really a great time, um, but it'll be a nice opportunity for you guys to kind of wind down, see what the rainforest is like and see a couple of different areas of Belize at the end of the trip. Um, so course content. Um, so again, for the online portion, you'll be doing those three weeks online before the two weeks in the field where you'll get to go, you know, through the fundamentals of oceanography and marine biodiversity, 
you'll start to be able to identify and understand what a foundation species is. Um, so thinking about those in coral reefs, seagrasses, and mangrove systems, you know, considering what a keystone species, species is, um, starting to think about the ecology of marine ecosystems and um, how organisms or different creatures might adapt to this very salty lifestyle. Um, what they might do living in a seagrass bed versus a coral reef and how they um, um, organize within those different places. Uh, we'll also get to hear a little bit of coral reef conservation, you know, what problems exist and what solutions are there. Again, when we're out at the station, as I mentioned, um, it's also home to the Wildlife Conservation Society researchers and the Belize Fisheries Department. So you will also have the opportunity to speak with them directly and hear from them, you know, what what is it that they're doing out there? What problems are they having? What what are the real life challenges when it comes to conservation? Um, and then we'll do, of course, uh, marine biology research methods. Um, we'll talk about those before you go and then, you know, that's what you'll get the chance to actually implement and try in the field. And again, lots of time in the water. So the, the three weeks online really provides you that foundation. And then once you get to the field, it's a really great opportunity to actually be able to apply all of that knowledge and see it essentially kind of happen in real time right in front of you. So it's really good opportunity to really solidify that. And again, for the FIG students, same things, you'll get to see what everything you learned over the semester, you'll get to see that, what that's like out at a coral reef ecosystem. Um, so this was one of the groups from a couple of years ago that was again, looking at queen conch uh, size and maturity between the fishing zone and the non-fishing zone. So you can see them here on the boat, taking some measurements of their lip thickness and writing on their underwater slates, which you guys will all have access to, to collect your field data. Um, you might be right, you, you know, you can take these underwater and write on them. You can see in the background, another student out snorkeling, um, perhaps laying a transect of some sort. Um, but yeah, really, really fun, great time. Um, here is just another student. I cannot remember what they are doing, um, but again, you know, conducting their research, essentially you'll be snorkeling just over coral reefs or seagrass beds, whatever it is you decide, um, and collecting data. As you can see in this photo too, that some of the areas of the reef can get really shallow, which can be fun and also challenging. So sometimes that means getting, you're gonna have to get a little bit creative sometimes in terms of your methods and how you go about that because you might be limited in going over the reef in some, um, some areas, but it's also a nice opportunity to be able to see things really up close because the reef is so close to you. Doing something with sea fans and algae cover or something. Uh, yeah, that might be right. I don't remember. Um, as I said again, so this is the little library or classroom out at Glover's Reef that you guys, that we will work out of, that will be ours for the time that we're there. Um, so we work in here, we usually meet in here um, kind of every evening and have time for reflections and discussions about what it is, you know, we saw during the day or learned or any challenges that we had, what went well. Um, we have, have access to books and different things in here for you guys to be able to use. Um, here in this photo, this is, this is Miles. He works for the Wildlife Conservation Society. Uh, he is their marine biologist. And so here he's giving a talk on the different research projects that they do out at Glovers and, and what they're finding and some of the challenges um, and also opportunities that they have out there. So again, as I mentioned, a really great opportunity, not only for you guys to apply your knowledge to what you're seeing of what you learned, but also to connect with local people that are actually working, you know, hands on directly with these systems and with some of these conservation challenges. Um, you can learn a lot from them. And Miles, if he, hopefully he's out there. I'll, I'll try. He's one of my good friends. Hopefully I can get him, make sure he aligns the schedule, but he's a very friendly, happy to share you know, and talk with you guys. So really, I would encourage you to take advantage of that.
Um, so this is a photo of uh, from the watchtower. There's a tower you guys can climb up and see out of. It's really nice. Uh, but this is just overlooking the lagoon of the atoll. Um, so what you can see here, I just want to point out, is kind of all this like continuous dark area is seagrass bed. But then right behind that, you see these kind of dark, darker, a little bit purple areas. And those are all those patch reefs that we keep referring to. So these you can actually swim just directly to from this dock. So you can jump in the water, swim over the seagrass beds and hit these um hit these patch reefs so you'll have access to those basically whenever you want um and and then as i said we'll be able to take uh the boat down here out to some other areas of of the marine reserve to visit some other patch reefs um i think that's that and then i think maybe i'll pause there are there any questions kind of on what it's like to be out at Glover's Reef or what we'll be doing um, before I hand it over to Joe and we'll talk a little bit more about logistics in terms of credits and, and that sort of thing. Yes, I have a question. Are we working yeah. on the projects the whole time that we're there or do we kind of start by like, I mean, I know you said we were like learning the area and stuff, but do we start the project pretty much as soon as we're there? Um, yeah, sort of short, shortly after. So once we get out to Glover's Reef, as I said, we'll have a couple of different snorkels where we just kind of go out and practice snorkeling. Some of the students that join maybe have a lot of experience in snorkeling and some may, this could be their first time snorkeling. So we'll go out in groups kind of based on experience to just kind of go explore the area right out here and make sure everybody feels comfortable in the water um, and such. And then after that, we'll even go on other kind of introductory snorkels to see like, what are some of the most common fish people are seeing? What are some of the most common invertebrates that people are seeing out there? Just to start to get introduced to the system and start to think about how to identify species, um, you know, starting to practice some of those skills when you're out there like, oh, I saw that fish and it had, you know, this marking on the, like near the eye and this marking near the tail, something like that. And we'll start to practice some of those skills too for identifying. So after we do a couple of those introductory snorkels, which is usually about a day and a half, um, and we'll also do practicing your methods as well. But after about a day and a half, yeah, then we'll jump in the water, practice your methods and, and start collecting the data. And we will be with you guys, you know, when you go out to collect the data for these. So we don't just send you out on your own to go do it. We'll be out there in the water with you. Um, and we'll be checking in on groups and helping you, you know, work through any challenges that you're having. Um, but yeah, so then you'll have about, Four, four kind of full days to collect data. And then you'll have a couple of days after that to do you know, data analysis and prepare for your presentation. So one of the things that you guys will have to do is you know, before you get into Blease, you'll have a research proposal of what you're going to do. Then you'll co conduct the, the research and then you'll do your data analysis. And then you're gonna write up your your research. So you'll go through the process of, you know, writing your introduction, your methods, your results, and your discussion. And then you'll do a final presentation um, on your findings on what you what you completed and what you found. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to, you know, practice scientific methods and scientific research in a really cool system um, that's you know, for you know where it is fairly remote um, uh, place, yeah. Any other questions or additions, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would point out that I mean, Jill is exactly right in terms of the, the the schedule. We also try to fit in a little bit depending on weather and when people have uh, time in their research schedules to go and check out some other places. So Teal mentioned the Four Reef, 
Um, it's a really spectacular snorkel, uh, but you can't predict when the weather will give it to you. So someday we'll just go, oh, they have this perfect day, let's go out there. We walk around the north side of the island and go tide pooling and look at some of the inverts that are in the tide pools. That's really nice. There's, as we said, a couple of other islands that form the rim of this atoll, and we'll go to at least one of those. And then there's some nice kind of downtime opportunities there, like paddle boarding and even uh, scuba diving if you're already certified. Um, and, and also just take the opportunity here and there whenever we can to see really cool stuff. So sometimes we're out there and there's dolphins and we'll just go and swim with them. And, uh, people are learning how to do backflips off of the dock and stuff like that. So uh, we'll, we'll try to keep it as a nice mix of you know, working uh, steadily to, to you know, do our projects justice, but also you know, have a good time and see what else is going on in, in that island. Well. Well, people saw a hammerhead last year on the Four Reef, as well as a whole, yeah. whole, whole uh, pod of dolphins swimming with us. So that was really fun. Other questions? We would do also for those, oh, I was just going to add as, as Joe was mentioning some of the other fun things that we do. Um, it just reminded me that we do also for those that are interested, we will, we do also go on night snorkels, um, which is a fun activity and a really cool chance. We just go out to these patries right off of, of the dock here, but it's a really nice chance to see kind of how the ecosystem changes from, from day to night and the different animals come out and the ones that start sleeping. So it's, it's really cool to see that change. I also want to underscore that the last few days is really, really fun. Um, it's, uh, you know, on the mainland doing some wrap up, um, but also just a chance to, uh, you know, learn a little bit more about the Belizean culture on the mainland. We stay at a, a rainforest lodge and we go caving together in a tubing down a cave as, um, you know, in a river that goes through a cave and we visit amazing, you know, Belize has an amazing Mayan history with lots of archaeological sites uh, with pyramids and everything. So we take a bus and we go to a Maya site and see some of those amazing uh, ruins that are there. And um, yeah, so it's a it's a nice opportunity to see a little bit of the Belizean mainland as well, because when we're out in Glovers, we're really quite isolated. You're going to feel more isolated probably than you've ever been. You're out 40, you know, 40 kilometers, 25 miles off the mainland shore. Um, so uh, did anyone have any questions about how the online course is structured? Um, I assume you guys have taken online courses before, given that we're all coming out of the pandemic. Uh, we do mix synchronous with asynchronous. All the lectures and things like that are asynchronous. Um, so you can, you know, if you work schedules and all that, you can access the, the online material at any time. But we do have three uh, um, virtual Zoom meetings with everyone that um, are synchronous. And the purpose of those really is to be able to discuss research ideas as a group, uh, to be able to give feedback to a whole group on research ideas. A lot of people, when you're developing your research ideas during the online course, the same kinds of issues and problems will come up for everybody. You know, like what methods, what what tools do we have available there? What, um, you know, what research supplies? What, uh, what kinds of, um, you know, sample sizes can I expect to get in just four days? You know, things like that. What sort of organisms might I see? And it's nice to be able to all be together to have the feedback from Teal, Joe, and I um, as you formulate those those projects. You'll be working on, it has to be a minimum of two people and a maximum of about four or five people that work on a research project together. And so also meeting on Zoom will be a nice opportunity for everybody to sort of get into breakout rooms, have a chance to get into the nitty gritty in your group in real time. Um, and then the last Zoom meeting um, on the last week, the third week of the online course will actually be with the big students as well. And we're all going to present our research ideas that we've come up with as sort of the culminating event of the online course. And this will also give the FIG students a chance to meet the, the four credit track, the two credit track people, a chance to meet the four credit track people. And also, so everybody gets to know each other and also hear each other's research ideas. Um, and it'll give the FIG students a chance to revisit what they uh, wrote up so many two, two long months ago, <laughs> two or three long months ago, give them a chance to revisit that.
any other questions otherwise we will likely have a little bit of time at the end if any come up all right well, i guess i'll pass it over to joe uh, I, see, I see a question in the chat now can we do the online program from anywhere yes you can um and as Liz Cass said, only a couple or only three components of it are synchronous. So I'd want you to be, you know, on at that exact time. The reason that we do this as a background is, um, you know, once we go all the way out to Belize and we're, you know, it's a good long boat ride. It's an awesome boat ride over the ocean to get way out to this gorgeous uh, reef. Uh, it seems foolish to spend a whole bunch of time sitting in a hot classroom with a projector and a whiteboard, and people taking notes and stuff. We want to get out there and get into the water and get into the mangroves and go, you know, really see, use the time in the field for what we, for, for our field time. So we try to have everybody get up to a nice uh, level, as Teal said, of like foundational knowledge about um, about coral reef ecology, but also marine conservation, a few other general topics before we get there. So if you were a part of the University of Wisconsin FIG program that Kat teaches, a uh, considerable portion of the semester was based around uh, learning about uh, tropical uh, coral reefs and their ecology and conservation. And so for those people that enroll in this program that weren't part of that, will the online portion is meant to bring uh, to give you guys that same foundational knowledge so that by the time everybody gets to Belize, we all know a lot about uh, coral reefs. And then it's just a question of getting into the water and practicing. And as Teal said, like learning to recognize some of these incredible species and learning not to get stung by the fire coral that's prominently displayed in that photograph there. Uh, the one that with the little pale cream tips, don't go rubbing or climbing on that. That's <laughs> um, okay, so the... Um, in this year, in 2023, we're going to do uh, most of this in the month of July. We'll actually start that last week of June for the um, for the online course. And the online course runs that last week of June and first two weeks of July. So that takes us up to July 14th. There's basically sort of three five-day modules. It's a couple of hours of work a day, as I think Kath explained. And for the FIG students, that's um, not necessary. You've, you've gotten a lot of that content already. Uh, if you're a FIG student, then you can um, skip all, most of the online content except for these uh, meetings, which is basically one every week during that period of time. Those are synchronous. And then we'll all travel to Belize together on the 17th of July. We get to Belize City. We spend one night in a local hotel. And then the very next day, we take our Dramamine if we're those sorts of people, which means if you don't know if you are, everybody should take it. And then boom, 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 we go zooming out over the ocean for, well, typically it's like last year was an hour and a half and the year before that it was two hours and 45 minutes. So you never know. But you can see flying fish, saw a lot of flying fish on the way out there last time. You go past a whole bunch of other islands that are really, really cool. Just the trip itself is awesome. The water is unbelievable color. Uh, somebody threw into the chat, what is the prerequisite GPA, um, 2.75. Uh, we prefer that there be one college level biology course. We just like to try to teach at a level that assumes that you know what photosynthesis is and what cells are and you know, some basic biology stuff. So um, if you're uncertain about whether a biology course or an, or an environmental science course, you know, might count, just get in touch with either one of us or with say as administrator Haley through our website. Um, to find out whether that qualifies lots of years we've had students who like took ap biology their last year in high school and they've totally qualified uh, we just want people to have some of that basic knowledge so because there are these two different tracks there's two different sets of prices um, if you're on the two credit track um, you that price for that course is the four thousand dollars that's the people that come just to Belize on the 17th. You know, the vast amount of that money, just so you know, is spent on getting people out to the island um, on every day that we're there, where we have a whole staff um, that's really remote. Uh, they got to bring everything out there from cooking gas to rice and beans to chickens and toilet paper and beds and mattresses. gasoline. So it's really, really far. The gasoline for one trip out there carrying a full boat costs anywhere around three or $400. Um, so, uh, so most of those costs are built in there. Somebody I just saw had a question about the flights. The flights are not included. Um, we don't generally like to do uh, flights because we, we like to let everybody, if they want, take the option of either coming to Belize early or maybe staying late. So we ask that you either arrive on the 17th and we'll give you more details about timing for arrivals and stuff like that once you're enrolled. 
Or if you're already in the country for a few days or a week or whatever, we just ask you to meet us at the airport on the morning of the 17th. Most of us might be there around uh, 10 o'clock, maybe noon at the latest. Um, thank you, Kath, for putting in some information about the, about the flights. Luckily, Belize is fairly close to the U.S. geographically, so flights that go like out of Houston or out of um, Atlanta or out of uh, Miami in particular um, can often get there for the four credit course, because you're getting that many more credits and because you, you're, you're uh, paying for the online instruction as well, which counts essentially as a, both in counts as a full course, that's the additional price. That said, um, for almost any university, uh, UW in particular, but most universities in the United States are really making a, a big effort to support students and encourage students to go and study abroad. Um, we. The, the data is pretty clear now that students that do study abroad, even as short as a two or three week course, um, do better in their courses when they come back to the to their university. They tend to score higher in GPAs. They tend to get jobs um, more regularly. They're they're seen as better candidates because of their international experience. They tend to get better paying jobs when they do, and they tend to have uh, greater acceptance rates in graduate school. So to some extent, you know, you can think of your paying the tuition as kind of an investment in your own personal enjoyment and, 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 and uh, learning, but also an investment in your future. And because of that, um, universities make a lot of financial aid and scholarships available for students who want to study abroad. So that might be in the way, in the form of uh, uh, grants or, or remissions to help you pay for the course of the program. Also, so, just, just want to, travel sorry, go. As well. Sorry, go ahead, Kath. Sorry, just sorry to interrupt. I just also want to point out, guys, that there's no additional tuition. Like you're you're paying when you pay for this program, it includes the credits. So you don't get a bill for your credits, your summer credits, in addition to the program fee. So the program fee includes your your tuition to pay for the credits. And if you're at a non-UW school, um, we can help you, but we've never had an issue with credit credits transferring, like from UW to uh, ASU, for example, from UW to, I don't actually, Washington University, I think you might be the first student that's come from Washington University, but we've, if they're, you know, big, well-known universities, there's never really been a problem with credit transfer, but we're happy to work with your um, advisor or financial aid office, or I, sorry, study abroad office to make sure that those transfer. So that's sort of how those two courses work. And at various times, we taught them separately, and now it's like, yeah, let's just teach them all together and go to Belize, uh, which is just such a great place to be. Um, pregunta, sorry, questions about, I'm speaking in Spanish too much down here. Uh, it's, it's questions about the two different tracks or the um, prerequisites or any of that kind of stuff? It all must be clear as Belizean water. Um, okay, uh, what, what's our next slide here, Teal? Oh yeah, sweet. Um, I can talk about this unless, Kath, you wanna jump in if you feel. All right. um, so, oh, go ahead. It doesn't matter, yeah, go for it. Um, in terms of trip preparation, um, so I guess the application deadline is February 17th, um, so that's coming up in another week. Um, it takes uh, about a week for uh, acceptances to be issued. I'll say at the outset that we try really hard at SABA um, not to reject students that have that meet the basic prerequisites. I mean, we feel like if you meet the prerequisites that we established to be what we think of as going to be a good student in the program and that the program is well suited for you. And if your desire is to go to Belize and take this program, then, you know, in, in our experience, by, by and large, most of the students that apply um, will be accepted to the program. So it takes about a week or maybe two at the most uh, for us to issue acceptances. And then you go through an enrollment process at UW. If you're not from the University of Wisconsin, um, we will, uh, you, you essentially enroll as what's called a special student in UW. So temporarily you become a, a UW student. It doesn't have any effect on your, your host school enrollment, um, but then you, um, you, 
you get credits through the University of Wisconsin as a transcript there. And then as Kath mentioned, you can do transcript transfer or credit transfers to your other universities. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm being reminded that this year because of some scheduling uh, complications uh, here in Ecuador, it'll take about two weeks for uh, acceptances to be sent out. And then you've got another two weeks to be able to do enrollment. After we've had that, then um, everybody will know their status in the program. And then we'll start getting into some more details on the pre-departure orientation that gives you a lot more details about packing and timing and uh, preparations. But for now, you can read the website um, about the course. It gives a lot more detail uh, on what we've presented here. Um, follow your um, application steps through the University of Wisconsin and the SABA uh, website. Um, we do require that everybody have a swim test. We would love to teach you how to swim, but we don't really want to teach you how to swim out in the uh, middle of the Pacific Ocean. And um, we'll Atlantic. have you guys. Sorry, Joe, enroll. it's the Atlantic. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I, we I, just I were in the Pacific. The Pacific That's Ocean. why you're confused. We <laughs> yes. literally were in out the Pacific Ocean, Ocean two days ago. Right. Let's call it the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you'll want to get a swim test at your local pool, which is really fun. That would be a good time to test out your mask as well. We highly recommend that if you don't have a mask that you have already tested in the water, that you get one and then try it in a pool for a while. Having a leaky mask is the biggest bummer thing. And we're pretty far away from like, even, even Amazon drones don't make it out to lovers for delivery. Uh, let's see. So we'll do some online campus courses. You'll get enrolled in that. We'll do those Zoom meetings, you know, as we said, um, for everybody. Uh, there's a couple of links here that you can read more about Belize. It's a really, really interesting country, as Teal mentioned, a nice mix of a lot of different kinds of cultures. If you speak some Spanish and you want to practice, everybody, almost everybody there speaks at least some Spanish, and lots of people speak only Spanish. Uh, at the island itself, everybody speaks English as well. Um, but just a super interesting mix of people and, and, and history um, and, and so deep, so closely tied with the ocean. A lot of their tourism is based around the ocean. A lot of the food comes from the ocean. So they've been ahead of a lot of other countries in terms of conservation um, desire and training for, for local guides and, and park rangers and fisheries management people in the tier region as well. So um, yeah, just uh, I can't recommend it enough. So yeah, I think that's about what I wanted to cover. This is a shot, a screenshot, a little bit from the uh, from UW Madison. Um, remember that this program is kind of taught as uh, uh, two partners. So the SABA Foundation is a tropical conservation organization founded in 1997. We've been running um, conservation courses for about 20 some 25 years. The conservation programs that we've been running field courses since 1999, so like 23 years now of various kinds. Um, and a lot of what we do is working in Ecuador, uh, where we, we lead uh, conservation programs that mostly work with local communities and local people to help them concern, uh, conserve forests. Um, we also lead a lot of study of like education programs here in Ecuador for local people, ranging from like little bitty kids in school all the way up to university programs um, that come and visit the various reserves that we've helped to set up. So SAVE has been involved in conservation research and education for the last 20 years or so. And um, we just, all of us, especially Teal and Kath and then myself a little later, have been so interested in marine biology, especially biology coral reefs, an understudied system. There's just so much more left to discover in these places that it just seemed like a great idea to try to start doing some conservation and teaching in coral reefs and you really can't ask for a better place in the western hemisphere than to go to belize um joe if you would i just want to add something about what's on this slide currently um once you apply and are accepted you will actually i think earlier than that you will have access to a my study abroad page at uw madison where um you also have access to insurance by enrolling in this program, you will get CISI insurance that covers things like evacuation, uh, emergency evacuation from Belize, things like that during your stay, um, if you were to require medical care, stuff like that. So that insurance um, card will be downloadable on your study abroad site. 
Um, there's also links to financial aid, there's um, health and safety information, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. So you'll have access to that um, during the enrollment process for the program. Teal, is there anything ne uh, next on the, let's advance that up. Oh yeah. Uh I can talk about this. Um, if you, if marine biology is, you know, you're thinking this might be a passion for you and you want to spend more time studying marine biology, um, there is also, or if you're just interested in tropical conservation in general, Joe and I are currently in Ecuador teaching a semester long program, which will be, which is offered every spring for 16 credits. And I've just figured I'd plug it here. If it turns out you can't wind up coming to Belize for whatever reason, um, the Tropical Conservation Semester Galapagos Andes and Amazon that's also run by the Seba Foundation uh, is a 16 credit course that includes not just marine biology, which we do in the Galapagos and on the coast of Ecuador, but also tropical ecology where we go to the Amazon forests, um, rainforests, we go to high elevation sites in the Andes. Um, but you also take intensive Spanish and you do a month long internship with a conservation organization at the end of the semester. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, check out that website or email either myself, Joe or Teal. We can put our direct email addresses in the chat for you um, if you wanna consider that as another option. Again, being a whole semester, it's more expensive but it winds up being about the same as a semester uh, a spring semester at UW-Madison in terms of because all your housing is covered, you stay with host families, much of your food is covered, your travel, and uh, the 16 credits. So just an alternative, another way to get marine biology under your belt. That's a four credit marine biology class that lasts about uh, a month and a half um, out of that semester. And Teal, is there anything else? Nope, this question, dang it, I have some 15 slides. Yeah, nope, there's our email question. addresses. Anyone have a question? Um, I have two questions. Yeah. So well, as far as um, like eating restrictions go, mm -hmm. I my stomach's kind of like weird. So how will that work? Um, yeah. Well, we, you, we can accommodate any kind of eating restriction in terms of vegetarian, gluten-free, um, you know, lactose intolerant, things like that. Um, when you, during the enrollment process, you will get a form that asks you a whole bunch of questions, including your dietary requirements. Um, the food in, in Belize, I will tell you, is so good and it's such whole food, you know, it's not processed. You have rice and beans, you have some chicken sometimes, or if you're a vegetarian, some vegetables or lots of tropical fruit, um, you know, uh, water and juices and just really good food that's good for you. Um, so if you have any specific, but like food allergies or food restrictions where the staff there is very used to working with student groups. Um, and so we can accommodate your needs and we'll find out that from you before you come. Okay, awesome. And then as far as like vaccines before coming, um, I was reading about like the COVID ones, but as far as other vaccines, like, do you know are there certain ones that we should get, or is that only when you're like in the in like in the rainforest and stuff? Yeah, no, actually, uh, Belize is amazing that way. It's uh, we really don't have a lot of other. Uh, I mean, there's always, you know, you can get bitten by mosquitoes, but as long as you're wearing insect repellent or have long sleeves, um, things like that, there really aren't a lot of illnesses to worry about in Belize, uh, and so we do not. There aren't any other required. Um, vaccines or pills or anything like malaria pills or anything that you have to take, which you would have to do if you came to the Amazon. You're right. Um, the COVID vaccine is a, it used to be a requirement to enter Belize. Um, we still require it on our study abroad programs only because we are often visiting, um, you know, pretty rural areas with, uh, in countries or places that have very limited medical facilities and access to medical care. And the last thing we wanna do is bring a contagious illness to a country that we're visiting. And so 
throughout the pandemic and, and still now we require our students to have received um, the COVID vaccine. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome, Katie. Let's see, other, other questions? You can also learn how to bake when you're there. Teal and I have both oh, yeah. done that. <laughs> they have several kinds of very cool bread and then pancake kind of things. Yeah. That we both have learned how to do. Yeah, it's mm. important. The cook is very, very nice. She's happy to share her. her Yum. Fry food Jacks. Food. Fry Jacks yeah. and Johnny Cakes. Mm -hmm. Elysian specialties. Now, if I could just learn how to laugh like her, I would be really happy. I know, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you have any other questions, please contact us. We are more than happy to answer your questions. Um, we look forward. Thank you, Naomi. And we look forward to hopefully receiving your applications and seeing you in Belize. Um, but by, by all means, before, after, before, during, and after the application process, we're here to help. So just reach out. Thank you guys so much. You're so Thank welcome, you. Katie. Thank Can't you. wait. Thanks, everyone. Yep, bye, Jenna. Right, good luck in your bye. semester. Bye, Naomi. Talk to everybody soon. Bye, Jenna. Take care. Bye, Jocelyn. Bye-bye. All right, guys. I'll stop the recording.